back at Dana's guy, look with here, yeah, the man himself. The man himself. And we are with, uh, I'm sure you guys remember, Felix. Hey. hey. Uh, Felix has been on my show a couple of times. Uh -huh. uh, he's the, he gave up the American dream for, to chase the Mindanao dream, right? <laughs> Hi, Trumpsters. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he riled up a lot of Trump supporters. <laughs> and then we have lovely Joy. Uh, Joy is the purveyor. Purveyor of this dish. Can you show us your cake? Uh, Joy, is, Joy is the baker of all these lovely yeah. cakes, guys. Very beautiful cake. Homemade cake. Homemade cake, yeah. yeah. She, she, uh, she makes yummy cakes. She's a yummy lady. And they know is the man, man. The, the man yeah, from I'm Montana. Not sure what I'm doing, but yeah. The man from Montana. <laughs> Believe me, I, it's the same thing. He <laughs> just started filming me one time. So guys, what about life in the U.S.? What do you have to? Uh, what advice do you give people? Would you advise them to move to the U.S. or you advise them to move to the Philippines? I know I just met you, but you're gonna have to be first because yeah. everybody knows what I. <laughs> What well, do you recommend? You're opening a little shop here with your lovely lady yeah. there, and why is that? Why don't you take her to the U.S., man? Um, you know, that's the Filipino dream, yes, to go to the U.S., right? Yeah. The American dream is to come to the Philippines, uh, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. So well, you... my, my honest answer is, is it's just too expensive there right now for, for what you get paid, and the price of living is just out of whack, and so... Oh. All right, so so for her and I to go there to rent, to get a vehicle, to yeah, have the so-called American dream is just isn't very realistic. August That's six, why I don't go there. Yeah. So it's not, the, it's not the viable option. And I'm all like, no, no, it's not. How about coming here? Just like we're paying mommy next. Well, with the exchange rate from America, obviously, it's very helpful. And, yeah. um, you have a lot more opportunity here. Mm. You know, if you want to do a little business, if you want to do something. Yeah, like your business. Yeah, you know? like we were able to build even a. It's a it's a native home, but it's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're able to build basically. a home and have a business and do things that we couldn't do in America. Basically, you have your own home and your own business already yeah. set up in a few months. Yeah. You do uh, at the not not a great cost, I imagine. Would you be able to do that in the US so easy? No, not even close. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Need, I'd have to take out a massive loan and then mm -hmm. just hope things worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not a fight. Actually, he would actually be going to me if you lived in California about a loan. And in Montana, it's a lot better to buy a house than it is in California. Yes, yes. So, uh, so some places are harder. A lot harder. California is uh, very expensive. Yeah, was in the mortgage business for uh, over 15 years. Uh, we worked at mortgage companies. Then my, you know, my ex-wife. That's something we need. To She's signing this week. No. Yeah. So you're a free so, man? Yeah, hopefully, but you know how she is. But um, the life here in the Philippines, is, you see how it is, and uh, uh, it is just, I gave up, I, I gave up living in America, just, just come over here. I mean, I miss my children, uh, but um, being here has, you know, a lot more opportunity, and you've said, I mean, the prices over there in America is just, Really, just crazy, and, uh, especially uh, in cost of California. Yeah. Cost of living is just terrible. Certain places there, I mean, San Francisco. Imagine there, that area where, yeah. I mean, you know, that's where I worked before um, when I was younger. Mm. Then moved to Southern California. I mean, Southern California, I thought was ridic ridiculous, but, uh, but when you go in Northern California, it's like San Francisco. A garage is being rented out for like seven grand. Yes. That's just crazy. For a car, to park your car. Uh, cars, well, you know, I mean, sometimes it's easier to buy a car than it is to buy a house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, 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 what, so what is it the Filipinos believe in the American dream? What, how are they going to live in the American dream? Well, I, I think what it was partly is they did have, they had some family members that went in the 70s yeah, yeah. and 80s. And it was at a time where the price of living to what they were getting paid it worked out for them. Yeah. And so I think that's where it comes from. And the majority of them are health workers, health care, I think. Yeah, and I think right now if you're a nurse, you can go to Europe maybe, but it's very hard with the testing there to actually be a nurse and then go there and be a nurse. You'll be a caregiver basically. So what about the U.S.? Can you still be a nurse or a health care or a doctor? Um, well, here's how it goes. When back in the 60s and 70s, it was easier for you to come, you know, to the States. Uh, some people, um, Little background about my uh, my my uncles that were there. 
Uh, my uncles, I mean, my grandfather was a prominent lawyer in the Philippines. He was able to travel around. Then, of course, one of my, you know, one of my uncles decided to uh, stay in New York, became a citizen, then started, you know, petitioning my my uncles, my aunts, including my mom. Um, should have been there in like 1971. Fortunately, uh, I was born in 69. My sister was born in 71. I was about ready to leave, but couldn't. Yeah. Then, okay, ready to go. My mom got pregnant to my brother in 72, and it became martial law, and it was kind of like, you know, my dad being a lawyer and everything like that. We stuck around until like the 80s. Okay. But back then, I mean, uh, my uncles worked odd jobs, but they were able to build you know, built from there. Yeah. Then, of course, when we got there in the 80s, like the, like 80, 1980, yeah. uh, it was the same thing. I mean, my father was a lawyer, but we went through a lot of bad things mm -hmm. because, imagine, my father being a lawyer here, you go to America and he's, you know, overqualified and all that stuff. So we started um, at a farm with my uncles and uh, kind of built ourselves there. Uh, my dad had businesses and my mom switched she took uh, she took a couple of years of training and became a nurse yeah, yeah. in America from you know an older lady yeah. so uh, that's where the health care started you know being a nurse and everything from like 83 and on yeah. then it stopped uh, a couple of years ago I mean honestly it, it was a lot harder when Trump came in Okay. Yeah. Guys, it's true. <laughs> so it's harder now they put, you know, and, and they yeah. need teachers in Arizona. I have a person that, you know, I had a friend that, hey, you know, we just had a Filipino teacher. It, it, it took her almost a few years just to get over here with the teachers. Yeah. Um, it was about three years ago that Arizona needed teachers. Okay, yeah. She is just getting processed now. Yeah. Wow. So it's hard to get in because of the new immigration laws yes. and everything like that. And and now, tell me, if you want to live, who's going to take the jobs if you send the Mexicans and all these other minorities that will do the work that white folk are? <laughs> white folk? Uh, no, 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 don't get it. White folk that won't go do. Will yeah. they clean the bathrooms? Yeah. Maybe. Will they go out on the field and do all the stuff there? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. not. Maybe not, yeah. <laughs> so, and then look at the economy and look at everything. I mean, everybody yeah. wants $15 an hour at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's yeah. not possible yet. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to get into anything else, but it's harder to go. Anybody that wants to go to America, if you're a Filipino, you know what? Yeah, if you're a Catholic, do the rosary mm -hmm. or kneel down and just pray mm -hmm. because, or find yourself a foreigner. Mm. and take you there mm. you know the teddy bear club my brother and my some of my relatives have this thing called the teddy bear club mm. we introduce you to someone and when you get to the airport you have a teddy bear yeah. <laughs> and maybe that teddy bear yeah, is good luck that you're going to be taking your girl there and she you know she just won the jackpot not everyone can do that. Yeah, but nowadays actually it's the opposite. Many Americans want to come here. Yeah. yeah. They'd rather come and live here because yeah, yeah. They, they, even they're on pension, it's very hard to survive. Exactly. Well, well, I can't get my pension yet. I mean, I just turned 50 a couple of days ago. I mean, I can't do early retirement. I'm just going to have to wait until everything is uh, pretty much doing that. Uh, you know, I, I do have a second family now. And uh, of course, my, my father, my parents uh, passing away. And that's what I've been kind of doing here and there, fixing our farms and you know, paperwork and our lands. And it's, oh, thank you. And um, that's what I have to do to have a comfortable life here. And when my pension or whatever it is, or my retirement plan kicks in, hopefully I'm still around to enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that's, so. a, well but the, that's the problem now. Pensions are not really enough to survive on in the US anymore, is it? Well, a lot of, it's that's why a lot of guys come over here also, is if you're only on a, a thousand or two thousand a month, yeah. you just can't really make it there. So that's a big reason why people come here. So, but one or one or two thousand is pretty good for this side. Oh yes, yes. For the Philippines, if you want to live, uh, I mean, you can spend a lot of money here if you go overboard. But if if you just live a, a basic good life here, you can definitely do it for a thousand a month. So. Or a lot less. Yeah. Meager. 
meager, right? meager yeah. nice, you know, yeah. just, you know, nothing. I mean, you can have the 82 inch TV, but, I mean, just just live, live within your means. Yeah. You, you, if you live within your means, you'd be really successful. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that's what's happening to us now. Yeah. You know, I have a, I have a, a travel and tours business. I kind of slowed that down because of my parent, my mother passing away again. But now it's like I'm getting a lot of calls from, from everyone. Um, from the states, hey, hey, I want to see your place because you know, I mean, not like Boracay and Palawan where there's so many people and it's saturated. Yeah. You know, I saw all your stuff there. I mean, come on, you know what? It's cheaper here. Come on over here. Uh, and, it's the real Philippines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at Dan and his yeah. father from Wales. They yeah. come over here and what do they do? I mean, they enjoy diving here. Well, yeah. I don't know. If, well, just if they need help in regards to diving, that place. In Bito and Barobogan, yeah. I can always just talk to the uh, mayor. And, yeah. No problem. Yeah. I mean, before when you know my dad was there, and, and they were in, my dad would just yeah. go dive and do everything. But. Sure, sure. So basically, what we are having now is people. Is the, the the tide has changed. People are now moving from the U.S. here. Basically, yes. it's a much yes. bigger yes. movement than from here to the U.S. Yes. So is that uh, that's very interesting, right? And actually, not only from America, from Europe, from Australia, from uh, from yeah. other other Asian countries, the Chinese are coming, the Koreans, the Japanese, and also foreigners will like move to Thailand. They're getting really burned in Thailand now. And the visas and shit. They all wanna. A lot of them wanna move this way. So actually, that's a real good little business uh, right there in you know, tourism and blah blah blah. You know. So we, I'm glad we all agree, guys. So guys, here you have heard it from the mouth of uh, the words of wisdom, <laughs> from the mouth of babes. They say you always hear the words of wisdom. I'm glad we all agree. Philippines is a place to be. We all agree. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong here. And the cost of living low, plenty of opportunities. And um, thanks to that exchange rate, everything is exchange rate is great. Uh, good leadership now here in the Philippines. We have a very good president here. It's very popular. And Mindanao is much safer. Mind Mindanao is very yeah. safe. Here on the news. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't listen to those people in Mindanao and all that stuff. I mean, martial law. Everybody smiles and yeah. they just follow the rules. Yeah. yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, they they tell them that oh, it's bad over there. They're gonna. No. That's a, that's a fucking. I've because said that already in the beginning of the video, yeah. in every video that you and I have. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? People from Luzon try to scare people to come over yeah. here. People from America, they scare them. Oh, you can't go over there. It's San beautiful. Francisco, LAX, Luzon is way more dangerous. Davao, Butuan, come over here. You know, there's Davao is a great place. Butuan's got a good place. I mean, yeah. Sur I mean Shargao and yeah. our Surigao. area, Surigao is now starting to boom. and. And all that. Very and safe here, yeah. especially compared to Manila. Safe. Compared to Manila, yeah. Angeles, Cebu. Remember how Palawan was scary because you know everybody was getting kidnapped and Cebu yeah. and all yeah. that stuff. Here in our area. No, there's no, there's never been a kidnapping here. Never. As you can see, guys, here are the foreigners. The Americans are here already, man. So it's too late. But you can still make it here if you're lucky. Uh, beat the, beat the rat race and coming tomorrow. Don't, don't wait till the bitter end. You know, running on the wheel somewhere in the west. Okay, the rest have already won the race, so get out when you can, man. Yeah. That's, that's the advice, that's the advice. Okay, hey, you know, here we go again. Here comes Joy, she's serving food. Ooh, look, yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy food. Okay, guys, it's great. We are in uh, Prosperidad. There's a little market right next door, close market. Okay. Prosperidad, just outside of San Francisco. And we're having a good time. I had uh, one beer already. I'm going to follow it up with a few more. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Yeah, you can have your cake and eat it. Yes, have your cake exactly. and eat it, guys. Yep. Have your cake and exactly. eat it. Exactly. Cool. OK, thanks for, for the chat, guys. I think uh, we have opened up the eyes of a lot of um, Filipinos, not only Filipinos, foreigners. Now they know where is the true paradise. It's right here, right here. Okay, oh, guys, you've heard it here. So uh, we're, we're building up our business. If you need any help, traveling, touring, settling down, finding a, the love of your life, uh, finding a, a, starting a business, getting visas, we are here to assist the team, the team. <laughs> okay, guys, cheers. Cheers. cheers.